right, welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Dan. He's a level three whiskey small eight. He is a dude. Yeah. So, <laughs> this is a time in history. We're gonna yeah. talk about a time in history, yeah. ranging over about 10 to 20 years. Yeah. In the 40s, 50s, 60s, when something happened that's a lesson for all marketers mm -hmm. and all artists. So, so. Something happened that's a lesson a long time ago. Yeah, and this is important because it affects us pretty big. Post-World War II, leading into Korean War and then leading into the Vietnam War, there's a change in how people drink alcohol. And there's a, there's a shift in view that whiskey is an old person drink. Okay. It's what my dad drank. Uh-huh. It's what my grandfather drank. Sure. And we're the young youth of America. We're not going to do what they did. It's not your father's Oldsmobile. Right. And so there's this rush to clear and lighter spirits, right. vodkas, gins, yeah. things like that. Which hit their peak in the 80s. Yeah. 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 So this is starting in the 50s, into the 60s, into the 80s. Right on. There's this rush to lighter spirits. Now, there were two reactions to this, and really most of the bourbon industry took one route, mm -hmm. and then some of the bourbon industry took the opposite route. And this is a lesson on Maker's Mark, mm -hmm. who took the opposite route. Oh, yeah. So the uh, big chunk of the bourbon industry started creating a new th spirit. Mm -hmm. That was a bourbon mm -hmm. in theory, but it was it was distilled at a much higher proof than bourbon is legally allowed to be distilled at. So it's the mash bill of a bourbon distilled higher, which strips out a lot of the big flavor things and makes a lighter spirit. You're talking about light whiskey. Yeah, and it's called. And so this is when government effectively saves bourbon, because if this had been allowed to be called bourbon, there would have been this basically watered down vodka aged spirit that technically could have been called bourbon government stepped in i know they created a new category called and, light whiskey and okay go ahead just i'm i'm, I'm and i know you're still trusting it's legacy. hard Let it, it happens every once in a while because usually, so, usually what requires a, a scalpel is met with a cudgel yeah no, they create a new category saying, fine, you can make that, but it's it's not bourbon. Right. It's its own category called light whiskey. Uh -huh. And it allows you to distill at a higher proof, basically like a vodka proof, mm -hmm. and then age it in uh, either uncharred or used oak, right. which makes this really light spirit. Now, there's only a handful of light whiskeys out there, and I thought we had the High West 14 light whiskey. Mm -hmm. I can't find it. So uh, the opposite tax, so basically it's a rush to the bottom, right? You got all of America going, hey, we want clear spirits and whiskey going, hey, we can do that, guys. Right. Hey, guys, we can do that, oh. right? Yeah, so they start <laughs> doing like a light whiskey thing. It's a horrible idea. Can I, why wouldn't they, as opposed to just bastardizing their own products, why wouldn't they, because they're set up to do it, hmm? just make vodka? Yeah, because they're whiskey makers, Well, right? Like, no, make whiskey, but keep it whiskey. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, you want some vodka too? We got an amazing vodka. Because we got vodka. People are that ridiculous. Is, that is pulling from the experience and the knowledge and the wisdom that we have learned for generations to make this new product something that no young upstart could possibly, yeah. possibly meet on the same level. Could have done it. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, you have the beginnings of the Samuels family okay. founding Maker's Mark. Yeah. And Maker's Mark came alive during the beginning of this era and all the way into this era. And while everyone else was trying to compete for cost and cheaper and light whiskey and all mm -hmm. this stuff, Maker's Mark showed up and said, no, we're going to sell an expensive bourbon. As a matter of fact, we're going to sell bourbon that's like four times as expensive as everyone else's bourbon. Right. And their marketing said, it tastes expensive and it is. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, like, it's just a you right oh you don't yeah. want bourbon no it tastes expensive because it is yeah 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 right. yeah right so what and so a quick moment and it was also a wheat a weeded bourbon which the dot so the classic rye mash bill in america typically was corn rye barley in in order of what has the most yes yeah. they swapped the rye for wheat and there's no rye in it oh uh, so it's, so still, it's a weeded it's bourbon corn yeah okay then it goes wheat then barley yeah. Okay. Now what? they purchased an old distillery. This is 1950s. I think it's 53 or 4. Yeah. The first run with a wax seal was 58. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, you have to thank his wife. Mr. Mark? Mr. and Mrs. Mark? Yeah. Marjorie Margie Samuels 
both came up with the name Maker's Mark yeah. and the wax seal. Yeah, that wax seal, hand dipped wax. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at ways to do like a wax type of thing, not in the same color, in the same placement. But just a just, wax closure. It's just such a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really is. It's, it's hugely problematic. So why, quick, quick footnote, footnote, why is it KY? Oh, they're one of the only. Right, this is KY instead of KEY. There's only a handful of distilleries in the US I think that Maker's use, Mark, Balcones. Uh, no, there's some other big ones. From my understanding is it's not a legally binding thing. You can say whatever you want. No, as a matter want. of fact, if you read the TTB law. Spell it however you want. If you read the TTB laws about whiskey, yeah. it's all spelled with no E. Really? Yeah. Uh, now there's all these rumors and mythology about like, well, if you spell it with no E, then you, you're calling back to your heritage of Scotland. But if you spell it with an E, then you're calling back to your heritage of Ireland. It's like, no. That is where it split. Ireland did introduce the E in order to differentiate themselves. Sure. But that doesn't necessarily mean in America. Basically, it's a choice. Yeah, we have, we have a whole episode about E or no E up here on our other channel. Whiskey versus whiskey. So makers sold to Hiram Walker in the 80s. Yeah. And then to Allied... Uh, in 1987, mm -hmm. and then Pernod Ricard. In 2005, Fortune Brands, which split and then uh, became Beam Incorporated. And then Beam became Beam Suntory. Okay. Choom, 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 choom. So now this is a Beam. Right. Right? But I, I just, it, I love this, even though it's not necessarily my favorite bourbon. Right. I love the fact that they went for the f you. Yeah. In the face of everyone else rushing to serve what people thought they wanted. Is this the most classic standard Maker's Mark? Yeah. And they keep it at Yeah, I mean, we've got some variants over here if you want to try, like, yeah, private good. select of the 46. Or, I do want to try. Or we can do the cast strength instead. Variants. Let's do the cast strength. Because the 46 opens up a whole other discussion. Just looking at everything I A don't. whole other nerd discussion. What do you prefer? I prefer the cast strength. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So there's just a whole another layer of flavors. The the density, the richness of all those flavors, they're nice. So I think there's a lot of people out there who just hate on Maker's Mark because it's one of those brands that's so big. Yeah, and it's easy to hate on the big guys. Right. You feel like, oh, they're, they're huge and I've had things that I like better, so those guys if, for being bigger. If everybody knows them, they must be stupid. That's <laughs> pretty much it. It's like when your favorite brand, or your favorite band, finally makes it big, and all your other people who don't know music know about them. Right. And, and now not, you're like, mm, it's not, no, so it's if, not fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it should be as astronomically large of a brand as it is, but I'm saying it's a not a bad whiskey at all. It's a really nice whiskey. Now, now are there craft whiskeys that I wish had? A lot more recognition and a lot more distribution. Absolutely. Yeah, that's not the world we live in. They've got a huge head start, and I think, you know, with the, the, the momentum that they have, they could have easily proofed this down to nothing and they could have been phoning it in for a long time. But for a classically nice bourbon, they did it's have a, a classically nice bourbon. They did make a huge political publicity faux pas at one point when they announced sort of quietly that they were going to proof down the classic maker's mark. What the hell? Because they were running out of stock. Well then, yeah, you know, screw those guys. And the reaction was so bad that they were like, no, 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 just kidding. Just kidding, it's fine. It's fine. We're not going to change it. So apparently <laughs> the guys that said it tastes expensive because it is, they've retired. 30 years later, the guys who now have the company right. are like, F it, let's water it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, okay, so the cast strength on the nose has all the same characteristics, but it adds this... A little spicy note, right? Um, that I mean, is, is obviously the higher alcohol content, but so the, it really helps the wheat jump out of the blend. Well, the Jeff. So I want to compare this to the Jeffersons that we had yesterday. So mine uh, is still over there with a the lid on it. No, compare. I can remember the Jeffersons. Okay. Compared to the Jeffersons, this has less honey, mm -hmm. a little bit more oak. Yep. Yeah, and this, you know, the cherries there. It's really nice. And what's weird is it's more woody. In the taste, yeah. but it doesn't end with the dry note. It doesn't. That Jefferson's ended with. Well, but again, that was a 16-year-old yes, Jefferson. But what I'm saying is this is more woody, right. but less dry. Yeah, which I is, agree. Which is weird. I agree. I agree. But uh, it's really nice, right? And the cash strength adds this whole other layer. I was I was on the the 45%. Let me let me savor the cask for a minute. Mm-hmm. And it has almost as much barley as it does wheat. 
it's almost a sweet tea. In the yeah. South, we have sweet tea. I've, yeah, I get that. A sweet tea with that classic bourbon sherry. And then a wooden... The oaky, oaky yeah, note. The oaky note there. Yeah, it's just... It's uh, really good. It's nice, man. And, you know, they spawned an entire category of uh, fancy whiskey. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the reason that the Booker's Baker's Knob Basil yeah. exist. Yeah, yeah. Because that was their response to Maker's Mark. Right on. Like, oh, we can do... We, hey, wait, hang on. We can still do fancy whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Descartes, Descartes, Descartes. I gotta use that on. Well, oh, okay. He's talking about how we artisan the shit out of that. Yeah, I I've think I've gotta use that on a more regular basis. They artisan the shit out of that. <laughs> I I think if other TV shows get catchphrases, you know, like. You get Urkel going, Man. Yeah, did I do that? So, or you got. Uh, it's too. It's to the point. So uh, there have been choice. some organizations that we have found that have been starting to use best you know, thing you like. No, that one's being used. Memes and catchphrases mm -hmm. that will just say in the vault, and they start showing up on like T-shirts and merch for. Oh yeah. 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 yeah what was the one most recently? <laughs> Uh, there were two. There was the best X is the X that you like. Right. That's showing up on all <laughs> kinds of companies that have nothing to do with alcohol. And now. then, and then the ant, the whole anti snobbery thing. That's freaking going like gangbusters everywhere. Yes, and now, isn't that great? That's great. That's great. It's just just a nod would be nice, but yeah, whatever. No. whatever. And then the but, most but, but it's in line with our goal for you know specifically the whiskey tribe. And then Jake had create, a t-shirt to create a more magnificent whiskey culture. Yes. And if we're doing that successfully, it's going to bleed out of whiskey and into other things. Absolutely. So that's going well apparently. And then Jake just a nod is all I'm saying. Just a nod. We got the sexual toast. <laughs> you all right there? That's just the name, by the way. Because if, if there was like the least <laughs> sexy bread I can think of, it's toast. Yeah. <laughs> Sp spices have a shelf life, not because they rot, but because, oh, this is for you guys. But because their aromatic properties fade over time. However. Good dried spices should last a year or more. Oh, there you go. 100 might be a bit overboard, so I would recommend starting with the classics. Black pepper, chili peppers, allspice, cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, ginger, star anise, cardamom, turmeric, mustard, and cumin. Get them whole if you can. Toasting them in a dry pan will bring out even more spice notes, but they won't last as long. Source. Culinary school. Yeah, so one of our people is stepping up to help us out with our Not only idea. one of our people, sexual toast. Sexual toast is stepping up <laughs> to help us when we talked about putting herbs and spices in here. Uh -huh. So as a smelling reference point. Right. Not even a baguette, man. Come on. It's way more sexy. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.